Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Hey, today we're talking about DMR, Digital Mobile Radio. And in fact, we're talking about me receiving my very first DMR radio. Now, I had a very specific set of requirements, requirements that are applicable in the weather we have here up at 65 degrees north. Stick with me and I'll let you know what I've come up with. All right, guys, let's go. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. So the radio I've come up with is the Retivis Alunce HD1 GPS model. It's got a built-in GPS. It's front panel programmable. It does messaging. Of course, it does uh, DMR. But uh, unlike many of the radios I've seen available today, it also does analog. So DMR, digital mobile radio, plus analog modes like our normal analog radios. Now, not getting locked into DMR was incredibly important. That's for two reasons. First of all, we have uh, people and group members who are still using analog FM. Moreover, we're doing data communications with these radios, communications like WinLink, and we wanted to be able to use VARA FM with a DMR radio, but with an analog channel. So it was important to have both DMR and analog on the same radio. Now, another important factor at 65 degrees north is how rugged the radio will be. If your radio can't manage minus 30 Celsius, or what is that, about 22 Fahrenheit, if it's not able to be submerged in water, you know, so then it's probably not the radio that you uh, want to use or deploy if your life depends on it. So the IP67 rating was incredibly important. I found a radio which has that IP67 rating which has DMR and analog channels and is front panel programmable. So I'm really stoked to let you see what I found. The radio is called the Retivis Alunce HD1 GPS. That's a mouthful, yeah? HD1 GPS. Now this is an old radio, but it's got some modern updates. So one of those modern updates was the USB charging for the battery as well. I didn't want to get locked in again like the Bofang radios that you have to take a dock along if you want to charge it. So USB charging was important. This one has it now. I also wanted to be able to connect a variety of different accessories to it. This one has quite a few accessories, both from Retivis as well as aftermarket. So let's show you what I've come up with. So here's my radio. I really don't know how to pronounce this. Alunce, Alunce, something like that. HD1, and it has the integrated GPS. Now, so, we have a DMR channel on VFO-A, and we have an FM channel on VFO-B. Now, this radio also has a built-in GPS, and it's really easy to enable it or disable it. Do, 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 do. When I'm on DMR, I can also say that, hey, do I want to receive GPS signals from others or not? And of course I do. And do I want to transmit my own? Yes, of course I do. So there's a lot of settings and they're very simple to select and change and save. Now, although all of those features are incredibly important, the ruggedness of the radio is actually the most critical for me. Now, to be fair, you know, just saying that uh, the radio can do this or do that, it doesn't actually matter. It's just brouhaha, yeah? So what we're doing now is we're going to put this HD1 in a salad bowl. We're going to place that salad bowl in the sink, and we're going to fill up that sal salad bowl, submerging the HD1 simply to prove the IP67 rating of the radio. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, testing. Test. 
Test table. Line four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Testing. Testing five four three two one one two three four five. Testing five four three two one one two three four five. Testing. Testing five four three two one one two three four five. Testing. Now, what we know from experience is manufacturers can write whatever nonsense they want to write on their radio equipment, on the boxes, in the marketing material, and so on. So you have to prove, you actually have to prove that the, the specifications of the radio are valid, and at least for the HD1, they actually are. I mean, this was incredible. But this wasn't the most difficult test that I put the HD1 through. I put it through another test as well. Stand by and let me show you. Now, for those of you who have been watching the channel for a couple of years or more, you know how difficult winter operations can be at 65 degrees north. Now, we have mild weather at the moment, but when I made this test, it was actually about Astro minus 30 Hotel outside, Tango, minus 30 November, Celsius, uh, yes. again, minus 22 Fahrenheit. And uh, I decided to leave the HD1 outside in the snow, in the ice, under the sky, in the elements for three days. Now, I didn't do anything special to protect the radio. I turned it on, GPS was on, it was monitoring a local repeater. Uh, there was both VFOA and VFOB. VFOB was on a simplex channel. Anyway, I just left it outside as if uh, I would have dropped it in the forest while walking my dogs. Three days later, I came back, I picked it up, I tried to log into the repeater, and I had absolutely no trouble. The battery was about half full. That was about the extent of any damage, uh, you know, to the radio. Now, many of you have probably read this post already. I did a blog post on this field test uh, a couple of weeks ago before this video was published. I'll leave a link to that in the description because it's definitely more hardcore. It's a much more extreme test than I've seen anyone put any of the Retivist radios through. So please uh, go to oh8stn.org and check out that article. Now, one other important aspect of the HD1, which I wanted to validate, was GPS acquisition. How quickly could I get a cold start GPS acquisition turning on the radio from an unknown location? So this is the radio that just came out of the salad bowl in the kitchen sink. It's still wet. Uh, I just shook it off a little bit to get uh, the majority of the moisture off of it. And I brought it outside into the backyard. You can probably hear the diesel heater clicking away uh, next to the ham shack. Now, from the time I came out of the house, turned the radio on, and got GPS acquisition was about 1 minute 12 seconds. That's not bad. We can watch that in real time. Anyway, and there we have it. I mean, that was pretty quick. Of course, I've started the GPS before, but even the first time I started up the HD1 outside in the backyard, the GPS acquired the satellites relatively quickly. It was actually quite astonishing. Now, it doesn't acquire those satellites as quickly when you're indoor, and you'll definitely have to have a clear view through a window uh, to the sky. Other than that, GPS works fine. This is a brilliant radio. Now, as with many radios, there's always going to be some things which can be improved, but these aren't deal breakers. So one of the things I'd like to see would be a firmware update. 
which adjusts the names of many of these settings so that they would be compatible with the Motorola DMR settings. It would just make it a lot easier if they would follow along with the Motorola DMR naming conventions. It's not just a problem with the HD1. Uh, I believe this problem is across the spectrum of radios uh, that are servicing the DMR community. Still, it's not a deal breaker, but uh, if you choose this radio, it's definitely something you'll have to get used to. All right, guys, I think that's about it for this part of my HD1 review. I think the next time we're going to start putting together a go kit for the HD1. Now, you've already seen my chest rig go kit. I think we're going to adapt that one for DMR. So please leave me a comment letting me know what you thought I was missing from the previous chest rig go kit and what I might need uh, to take along with a DMR go kit uh, if I were deploying it on my chest rig. Once we get that Go kit set up, I think we're going to go out and do some portable wind link with the HD1, show you the benefits of having that analog and DMR on the same radio. All right, guys, look, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment and or a thumbs up or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.